Okay, now I want to take a look at primitive or parametric objects. We've actually been looking at them all along, but we just haven't really given them a name. So that is all of the objects that you're going to find in this particular drop down menu. Now, these objects are created from mathematical formulas using a number of preset values. So that means that primitives or parametric objects have no points or surfaces that you can manipulate. So let's take a look at what that means. So the cube right now is in its mathematical parametric state. Now there are a few things that we can change like we saw earlier. We can change the scale by grabbing these. And we can adjust the height. But we're very limited as to what we can do with this cube in this particular state. Now we can do some pretty important things. We can come over here to the Attributes Manager. We can click on Object, and any object that's in your scene is going to have an Object tab in the Attributes Manager. And here you can control things like X, Y, and Z as well. You can also control the amount of segments that are used to make up the object. So if I come over here to Display and go to Lines, we can see the lines that are being used to make up this object. If I come over here to the segments and increase these numbers, you can see the number of lines are being increased in the different axis. Now this is very important when you get into modeling because you'll want to start with an object as close as possible to the state that it needs to be before you start manipulating it. That may not make a lot of sense right now, but it will as we go on. Now something else that you can do here, you can turn Fillet on and you're going to get a beveled edge. Okay, So you can control the subdivisions of the bevel right here and the radius of the bevel. All right, But for this example we're not going to use the Fillet. Now separate surfaces, this may not make a lot of sense right now, but if we check this, when we make this object editable, which we are going to do in just a moment, a separate object will be created for each side of the cube. It should also be noted that you can only select this if fillet is not selected. So you don't have the option if fillet is selected. But we're not going to check this right now. So again, we're just trying to get our primitive object as close to the state that we want it to be in. And then we're going to make it editable. So to make it editable, we can come over here and click this icon. Or we can click C on the keyboard. First of all, we need to select the object, hit C on the keyboard, and you can see that it has changed. The icon has changed here. Now it's a polygon object. Let me just do a Control or Command Z to go back. You can see right here, it's a cube. If I click C, watch the icon change. It is now a polygon object. What that means is that now we can come over here and control points and polygons and edges by using these tools here. So if I click on points, you'll see that now I have a cube that is made up of a bunch of points. I can use my selection object to grab some of the points and move these around. I could grab edges and I could move these. I can grab polygons using the polygon tool and I could just grab this top section of polygons and move this around that way. So basically what's happened when I've made my object editable it has broken the object down into its components. And the components are polygons, edges, and points. Okay, so let's just take a look at a couple more objects just to see what we have here. So Let's take a look at the cone, and if we take a look at the cone right now, we know that it is a parametric object. We can't come in here and select the points on it, or the edges on it. Okay, it's not at its base level. Right now it's a mathematical equation. But each one of these does have specific parameters that you can adjust in the Attributes Manager. So all of the objects will have a basic tab and you'll have some basic features that you can adjust. These will all be the same for all objects. The coordinates will be the same. If you go to the Object tab, 
that's where they're going to be object specific parameters that you can adjust. So on the cone, we can adjust the top radius, the bottom radius, the height, the amount of segments, make it much denser that way, rotation segments. We'll take a look at the caps. So right now we have caps on. We just zoom in here a little bit. We turn caps off. All right. Turn caps back on. The cap segments. We can turn on top here and get a little fillet for our top. Let's turn that on and off again. All right. And we can control the radius and the height of that fillet. We can do the same thing with the bottom. Go under here. So the cone is one of those really cool objects that have a lot of parameters that you can adjust in its parametric state. All right, we can go to slice and we can just do a to and from here. And all these are animatable, by the way. You see that we have our little animate dots next to these. So that means that we can animate them. Turn on a regular grid. Okay, let's get rid of the cone. Let's take a look at maybe just a couple more here. Let's take a look at the cylinder. Again, we have the basic tab. Let's go straight over to the object tab. We have a radius, the height, segments. We go to caps. We can turn the caps on and off. We can do a fillet again. Okay, and we can do a slice with this one as well. The regular grid, if you'll notice when I turn that on and off, is only available when slice is checked. And it's going to create a regular grid inside here. So you can adjust that number. Let's get rid of that. Let's take a look at our platonic. Platonic doesn't really have many options except for radius. Probably not the best one to look at here. Let's take a look at the capsule. Let's go to the Object tab, Radius. You can do the cap segments here, the height segments, rotation segments, and again, we can do a slice with this one as well and turn on regular grid if we want. Let's take a look at two more that are pretty important. One would be the sphere. And with the sphere, we can control the type of sphere. So we have a standard and we have these other ones that just control the way that these spheres put together. All right. There's our hemisphere. All right. Let's get rid of that. And last but not least, let's take a look at which one. Let's look at the tube. Tube is a good one. You can do a lot of stuff with this. Let's go to the object. We have an inner radius an outer radius, rotation segments. If you wanted to do something like a nut, you could do that pretty easily with the tube. Cap segments, you could do a fillet as well. And we can do slice with that one as well. Regular grid again. So I think you're kind of getting the idea. Okay, so your parametric objects are very powerful. And more often than not, this is going to be the first place that you go to when you start to model.